Good morning, it's Anne Murphy here. How are you? Sorry I'm late. I just um, had a busy morning just doing my chores as normal and uh, having a shower and getting ready for this live broadcast. I'll just wait a couple minutes just to let you all join and make sure that I'm going live in the group. Hope you all had a good weekend. I've temporarily moved my office to the dining table to be in the air conditioning since last week because it's just been so hot here in Brisbane and we're supposed to be in autumn. I just had a sh shower and the perspiration and the air con's on and I'm still really hot. Okay, so I'm here. Uh, say hi if you're watching and let me know you're here. Uh, like I said, Anne Murphy from Dome Explicity and this is the Shop Smart Eat Well group. And today I wanted to just jump on and uh, talk to you about how you can substitute some of those common grocery items that you run out of just to save you a, a quick trip to the shops and uh, it's something that we all do. Um, I am lucky I guess in a way that I've got access to so many shops um, within five minutes of where I live. I've got a shop around the corner and I've got four supermarket, or five supermarkets plus so many other stores that I can just duck into to get that one thing and and I guess I've learned to be disciplined and you know stick to my budget and only get those things but sometimes you know you don't always have that opportunity or the money to do it and nine times out of ten you know the way the supermarkets are set up you can be so easily tempted to buy those things that you don't need you know like especially markdowns and I know markdowns are good to get but if you're trying to save money on groceries you know it's not a good thing you didn't probably need them before you went um, and it's a great great um, enticer for the supermarkets are using now to get you in because it's become nearly trendy I guess to um, get mark markdowns you know pe there's groups around where people share their markdowns and um, you know if you don't need them you know don't buy them but these are just some of the common things that you might um, run out of and it might help you to uh, learn what you can stock instead for those moments when you do run out. And these sort of things, you know, they don't expire um, too soon. They keep for ages and you can keep them in the freezer and then when you um, do run out, you know, you can go to use these things instead and, you know, write what you've run out of on your list for the next time that you're due to do your shopping. So, and I'm thinking back to say my mother's day or my grandparents' day when they didn't have shopping centre malls or, you know, big supermarkets. Their shopping was done once a week. We had our milk delivered. I do remember as a young girl going to um, walk around the to the corner shop to buy a loaf of bread sometimes, but... Um, you know, there just weren't any options in those days. So women had to be, uh, you know, useful and thinking of what else they could use instead. And these, some of these items are still, um, you know, people are still using these items to clean and and they, they still work. So I don't know why more people aren't using them. But let's go to one of the first ones. And if you've got a pen and paper, you might want to um, make some notes um, just so that you've got this information. And I will be sharing... Um, a printout in the group a bit later on today um, on one of those common items that's good to keep in the house and all the different ways you can use it and it's just fantastic I love it so but the first one is um, bread so that's one of the most common things that we run out of and if you just keep you know plain flour and baking powder or self-raising flour in the pantry you can pretty much make any type of um, bread product really easily. Also, um, if you are inclined to make uh, your own bread, you know, a little um, tub of yeast in the baking aisle is only a couple of dollars and it keeps 
you know, for ages in the pantry. So you can make your own type of bread product products. I do have a bread maker that I bought for twenty dollars from the thrift shop, and it doesn't take up any room. I've got it high up in the cupboard. So there have been times where I've made my own bread just out of plain self-raising flour and um, you know, I make my own sultana loaf sometimes with it, but not usually only in winter time if we're having soup or something. But puff pastry is another good one. I always have puff pastry in the in the freezer and you can make savoury scrolls out of um, the puff pastry. So, you know, even Vegemite and cheese or ham and cheese, pesto and cheese, uh, peanut butter and jelly, uh, jam, you know, whatever you've got, got there um, to use. Um, and you just spread the, the puff pastry, uh, defrost the piece of puff pastry, spread your fillings on, roll it up and then slice it um, into one and a half centimetre slices and put it on a baking tray and bake it. Tortillas are great, you know, for wraps or you, um, I keep, they keep really well in the pantry unopened for a really long time and then in the freezer if you've still got spare. All your things like your Turkish bread, I often pick that up marked down uh, when I'm doing my, my grocery shopping and it's um, really good as is or as a pizza base or, you know, for the kids to take to school. Any sort of bread rolls, I always keep bread rolls in the freezer. So that's just a, a another quick alternative for sliced bread. Um, things to make are pikelets or pancakes. You know, if you've got self-raising flour, egg and milk, you can always make um, pancakes or pikelets instead of bread. And they can, if you take the sugar out, you can have them um, savoury and spread them with savoury type fillings. Um, scones, so if you've got a basic scone dough, you know, you can make uh, sweet scones or you can make savoury scones. You can add grated cheese and ham or grated vegetables like uh, grated zucchini and carrot and top them with cheese. You can also make a scone dough and use that as a scroll. So um, like the scrolls that you see in the in the supermarket, you can make them savoury or sweet. Uh, you can make your own soda bread, Irish soda bread, which is really easy. Um, I don't believe it has yeast in it. You can, hi Leanne, how are you? Um, you can use just a self-raising flour and bicarb soda, I think it is. Damper, if you've got a bottle of beer in the fridge, you can eat, make a really easy damper and bake that in the oven. And that's really nice um, to eat. English muffins are good, a good alternative for, for bread. Pizza dough, you know, just Greek yogurt and self-raising flour. Um, you can make um, all types of different bread out of the pizza dough. You can make... Uh, the Lebanese bread or um, Indian type breads um, and crackers. You know, I always have a, a packet of crackers in the in the cupboard, like you know your Ritz or Jats or Cruskets, all those sorts of things. So there are quite a few alternatives for bread, and you just keep them in the pantry. Um, you know, try to keep the kids away from them, and then when the bread runs out, you know you've got a another alternative. So there's just a few ideas. Milk. Um, is another one that is something that you often run out of and we have I buy the long life milk for my husband and I for our coffee and then the kids have um, fresh milk but they will drink the uh, long life milk if we run out but when I was a single mum and money was tight I used to always keep powdered milk in the cupboard and I know it's probably a little bit expensive when you think think about it it's probably five or six dollars but it does keep for a while in the in the pantry and you can um, you know, <clears throat> you, it does have a little bit of a funny taste, I find, when you just drink it as is. But, you know, for the kids, you can mix some um, flavouring like Milo or um, topping in it to make a milkshake or um, it's good enough for their cereal. But it's also really good for baking. You know, if you're making those pikelets or whatever and, you know, instead of using the fresh milk, if you're getting low, you could use um, powdered milk. And for the five or six dollars, you know, you get quite a few litres out of, the powdered milk so and there's lots of other uses for powdered milk too but I just can't think of them um, off the top of my head right now but another one is something that I always run out of is toilet paper I just can't seem to um, time it right you know when I look at 
what I need to buy and put it on my list, I say, no, we've got lots of toilet paper, but for some strange reason we always run out. So you can always use tissues or baby wipes um, just to get you by until you do your next shop. Um, same as with tissues, you know, if you run out of tissues, which I have, you know, if someone's got a runny nose, you can use toilet paper. Um, butter. Butter or margarine is something that we run out of. And I always keep, I prefer butter, but I always keep um, the little pads of butter in, wrapped in the paper in the freezer. So it's like I never really run out. Um, I've always got at least one in there if I do run out of the spreadable butter for the sandwiches. So um, I'm prepared in that way. But for baking, you can use um, apple sauce. I keep a jar of apple sauce in the pantry or once it's open in the fridge and that keeps for a really long time. Uh, you can use oil, olive oil, you know, um, so many countries use, you know, spread olive oil on bread and it tastes really good. Um, coconut oil is another one that you can use for baking or, um, you know, to fry something in or just to flavour something. Um, mayonnaise on sandwiches are a good alternative to butter. And sometimes, you know, if I'm making a sandwich for myself, um, Hi Nadira, it's two, I buy the 250 gram blocks of butter um, when I freeze it, but if I do buy the 500 gram block, I'll, I'll chop that in half, or if I'm thinking I'm going to be doing a lot of baking that day, I'll leave it as a 500 gram block, but usually just the 250 gram block. Um, Greek yogurt you can use in baking in um, to substitute butter. Um, you can also use mashed avocado on bread or hummus if you've got um, hummus, um, cream cheese, um, peanut butter just on its own. But yeah, like I said, when I was making my own, if I make my own sandwich, I don't even worry about butter. So, you know, but there's always so many alternatives for butter in baking. Eggs is another one. And obviously you can't replace an egg. Um, if you wanted a fried egg, you couldn't, there's not really much substitute for that or a boiled egg. But um, there are so many alternatives for eggs in baking. I've used custard powder as an alternative for um, eggs. Um, apple sauce, a quarter cup of apple sauce in um, a cake is a good alternative. Mashed banana, or I've just read recently where flax seeds are really good um, when you soak them in water and then use that to replace some um, eggs in your baking. And I've got a cake recipe that I use for just about any time I wanna make a cake and it doesn't have um, butter or eggs or um, milk in it. And I'll share that in the group later. It um, makes the most beautiful cake, like a mud cake. And I use it for all sorts of flavorings of cakes, whether it's a tea cake or a chocolate cake, vanilla, you know, I've made it with, um, blitzed pe tin peaches in it to make a peach cake and you know every flavor that you could um, possibly imagine I use this cake carrot cake hummingbird cake just this same recipe so I'll share that um, later in the group sour cream you know you've got your Mexican dinner all planned for the evening and you've realized oops I don't have any sour cream and this is a really good um, recipe if you just um, get one tablespoon of lemon juice and then fill the one cup measure with milk. It will um, thicken like sour cream and that's really good to use. Try to do it at an hour or so before you actually um, have your dinner. And Greek yogurt, I always use Greek yogurt as an alternative for sour cream, for salad dressings and um, you can probably see by this list, Greek yogurt is one of those things that I always um, have in the fridge. It's just so versatile for so many things. Um, the lemon and lime juice, you know, you buy it in the plastic bottles. That keeps forever in the fridge. So just when you want to make your own salad dressing and, you know, you don't have salad dressing, you can use that with a bit of oil and a bit of mustard maybe um, to make your own salad dressings or, you know, Thai food if it needs a squirt of lime juice. Um, those long life bottles, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, cake, I've mentioned the cake um, recipe. Dishwashing liquid, that's another one of those things, you know, I feel the bottle, when the kids are washing up, they tend to have, you know, use way too much. And before my next shop, I've run out, but there's so many things 
um, that you can use to replace your dishwashing liquid. Uh, baking soda just on its own, you make a paste of it and then rub it over the dishes, works really well or you can add vinegar to that as well. Shampoo is an, a really good alternative to um, dishwashing liquid just for a couple of days until you're ready to do your next shop and keeps you away from, from the um, supermarket. Uh, body wash is another one. Um, laundry powder is another one. Um, bath soap and I always have a couple of cakes of sunlight bath soap or sunlight soap in um, under my kitchen sink because it's um, really good and actually that's all my Nana used to use when um, she used to use it to bathe with, to wash with, to do her dishes with and she had one of those, I don't know if you've ever seen them, they're a little um, like a little cage thing and you keep all the soap, um, soap bit, leftover bits of soap in and then she would just use that to make a bit of um, suds in the dishwashing liquid. I, I never really liked it because I got so used to using like a really, um, you know, the water had to have a really soapy feel for, it, for me to make it feel clean, but it still works, you know, it cuts through the grease and you make sure the water's hot. So sunlight soap, um, just grated and thrown in the um, hot water is really good if you run out of dishwashing liquid. Laundry powder, um, they advise, you'd have to check your machine if you've got a front loader machine. I don't know what whether this would work, but just double check. Um, half a cup of shampoo is um, a good standby. Don't use dishwashing liquid because I think it suds up too much. And even using nothing, you know, if you've got a lightly um, soiled load, you know, just even your kids' school uniforms or, um, you know, just your everyday clothes when they're not really dirty, don't use any any powder because the, the agitation from the washing machine will um, help get the, the clothes clean. Um, and if you run out of shampoo, one of the, um, this is a recipe, just one tablespoon of baking soda, uh, mix in with a cup of uh, warm water and then lather that through your hair. And um, just conditioner sometimes can help get your hair clean or just keep some of that dry shampoo, you know, buy yourself some dry shampoo and keep that at the back of the vanity cupboard and um, use that instead. And even, you know, just plain water sometimes will help um, just give your hair a bit of a clean. But this is the product that I mentioned at the start that I absolutely love for both cooking and for everything else. It's just got so many therapeutical qualities. It's just fantastic. And that's coconut oil. So if you haven't got a jar of coconut oil in your um, house, you really should have it. I can't even begin to tell you how many things it's useful for, like other than cooking, like I've made a coconut cake before and used coconut oil and it just makes such a, a beautiful flavour and it's good for salad dressings, it's just good for everything, um, good in baking, good for frying, but um, it's also so good for so many different beauty applications like, um, oh, you know, to get rid of dandruff or to wash your hair to use as an after shave balm lotion. You know, if you've shaved your legs or your husband's shaved, you can rub it on. Um, it's good for cuts and brazes. It's good for healing so many things. I, I just can't remember everything off the list, but I have got a document with all these different uses and I'm going to store it in the um, group, in the file section, because yeah, you just, you know, got no idea how good it is and it really does work. I can personally vouch for all these different things that I've used it for. So um, yeah, that's basically it. So if there's something that you run out of quite often and you'd like to know what's a good substitute, um, just drop it here in the comments and I'll try and find a good solution for you. But start, you know, instead of um, running to the shop, just say you've run out of cheese, you know, like you can even make your own um, cream cheese out of Greek yogurt you know you just it's called um, labna and you just um, let it let it drain let all the moisture drain out of it and you've got a really nice spreadable cream cheese with the Greek yogurt if cream cheese is something that you use a lot of um, but if you um, if you do find that there's something that you run out of a lot just drop it here in the comments and I'll um, be sure to answer it but also use Google too you know 
you think, oh, I've just run out of um, bicarb soda or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you've just run out of, um, just type into Google what's a good substitute for A or what's a good substitute for B or, you know, whatever it is, and you'll be sure that there's um, something out there that you can use. And look up some of these old um, grandma's recipes and remedies because those things still do work. Like I only use water to clean most of my house and then I have an all-purpose cleaner that's made of um, bicarb soda and vinegar and essential oils and it works a treat. So I don't even go down the cleaning aisle and that's how I can get to save so much money on, um, on my groceries and I don't even, uh, you know, let alone worry about all the chemicals that are coming into the home. So um, they're just some things. But there is another website that I'll drop in the group too which I just um, oh, I use it at least once a week, and it's called the Cooks Thesaurus, and the um, I'll drop the link in. But if you've got a recipe and you you don't have an ingredient, you type the ingredient um, that that you haven't got into this search field, and it will um, it will give you a it will give you a solution. So, like if you need oregano for a recipe and they don't have it, it'll tell you what's a good substitute. Or if you need wine or red wine vinegar or olive oil or something like that, it'll give you a <coughs> pardon me. It'll give you a, a really good substitute. And I'd be lost without it. So I'll uh, make sure I share that too. So I hope you liked today's um, broadcast. And uh, if there is anything. Like I said, that you think that you run out of a lot, just let me know and I'll um, be sure to um, find out what the best solution is. I'll drop that coconut oil um, cheat sheet or um, document into the group. And, you know, keep going with your March savings challenge, all those who are joining in. You know, just think of that end goal and instead of running to the shops, you know, think of a substitute and till you get to the shops again. So um, I hope you have a great week and I'll be probably going to the grocery store um, sometime today or even tomorrow. I've got $60 left for the fortnight and it's a little bit tight, but, you know, I've got enough food. We're not going to starve and I'll be sure to use some of these substitutes if I run out. So um, we've got coffee and that's all that matters. <laughs> okay. No worries, Leanne. Thanks for joining. I'll um, catch you all later. Bye.